When I'm Walter Keeler, I've made pots all my life, one way or another. I got into pottery because I used to go mudlarking as a boy along the banks of the River Thames, picking up its old pottery. And I just fell in love with pottery. I loved the feel of it, I loved the look of it. And I liked identifying what I'd picked up with what I could see in museums, so that I'd have a little fragment and then I'd toddle off to the Museum of London or whatever and then there would be the piece. And I'd say, ah, oh, I've got a bit of one of those. And it gave me an insight into the way pots are made. Um, before I ever considered being a potter, I've always thought of myself as a thrower. That's always been my primary way of making pots. Although I've used extrusions as handles and press moulds for spouts, various things like that, sprigs for decoration or for, for my mark. But recently, fairly recently, I started to use extrusions as forms in themselves. I operate the, <laughs> operate the handle of the extruder to push the clay through with one hand, and with the other hand, um, I contrive to develop the shape. So I put a serious curve on it as it first emerges, and then let that curve diminish as it continues to grow. Um, when I get to the length and shape that I think is going to be satisfactory, I run a pin round the circumference of the piece near the extruder, don't cut it right through, and then at the crucial moment when I'm ready to take the weight of the piece, I just give it a wriggle and it comes off in my hands. And then I have to transport it to the cradles on the board without crushing it, distorting it too much. What I do to, to finalise that bottom cut is I spread the base a little bit by expanding my hand inside the extrusion. I stand it on a banding wheel and then I look at it straight in the eye and decide whether it's upright or not, which it probably isn't. So I put a little coil of clay under the base of the jug to, until it's straight, until it stands vertically. Obviously from the profile it's got this swing to it, a curve, but face on, or from the back, it should be vertical. And once I've got it vertical, I take a little tool, which is a block of wood with a little sharp blade in it, run it around parallel to the wheel, and it cuts the base of the pot off level. In, in this, um, this process, you'll see that I offer this uh, section of, of inner tube to the front of the pot, center it on the mark that I'd made to establish the middle, and then carefully, I, I also attach it with rubber bands because I haven't got enough fingers. Um, so I then draw carefully around the profile to mark precisely where I want to cut it to form this lip. And then, having done that, I'm, I make a mark to establish the height of the cut or the, or the depth of the cup, how far the cup will go before I terminate it. And then at that point, I mark that with calipers, which is very straightforward. Just mark both sides the same distance from the wheel. And, um, and then I put a strip of paper or card around the pot, because I don't want a horizontal line. I could mark that with calipers. I want a line that lifts slightly at the back, because I think it gives the pot a, just a little more character. So I hold my strip of card on the back of the pot between the two marks and draw a line. And then with my modelling tool I cut round that line to um, remove the section of clay that I no longer need. Cut it away, take that off and then suddenly that bit of old extruded tube becomes a jug. You can see what it's about. The only thing that remains to do is to undo some of the damage. The way that I do this is to wet my fingers and simply squeeze those edges together, that, that, that cut edge. Squeeze the two sides of that cut edge gently, and bring them together, which raises those edges so there is a sort of little, little groove running around as well. That leaves the, um, the, the rim at the back, the bit that doesn't pour. Recently I've taken to using a little extrusion, a little L-shaped extrusion, which I then stick 
onto the rim and it gives it a bit more bulk and a bit more integrity. So now we've got this jug, it's got a lip, it's got a, a rim that has integrity um, and it stands quite happily on its surface but it won't hold water because it hasn't got a bottom in it. So what I do, I measure the base of the pot and I throw a little pot, just a little slightly conical form and I put a little gallery on it. I then stick the pot into the gallery. I put some slurry around, offer the pot up, wiggle it a bit, seal it round with my finger, and then I attack the throwing with various tools. First of all, I use a smooth tool to make a sort of chamfered join into the extruded form, hopefully leaving little sort of little burrs or little edges here and there because they always excite the eye and they also speak of how you've done things. I use bits of broken wood, bits of snapped off timber, ragged edges, and I make marks in that truncated cone of a base and then I maybe smooth them over a bit with the flat of a tool so that they've got a scumbled look. So I don't want them too aggressive, but I want them to look lively. And then at that point, if I'm satisfied with what I've got, I cut a bevel on the bottom and then run a wire through, lift it off, and put it on a resorbent board, which will take some of the moisture out of the base of the pot. The pot now needs a handle. Now the handle in this case was extruded, but I've also attacked the handle with a bit of broken wood so that it, it, it has some sort of connection with the texture on the bottom of the pot. And it also, as I offer it up, you can see that I'm, I'm bridging the thrown and sort of roughed up section at the bottom. I'm marrying that, bridging across to the extruded section so that the extruded handle carries some of that information from the base up to the rest of the pot in, a, in, a, in this sort of arcing gesture. I cut the bottom of the handle so that it sits snugly against the thrown section and I cut the top so that it has sufficient surface area, a little facet, which will bond to the pot. But I like to keep a sense of separation. I like it to look as though it's a separate thing that's been stuck on. Um, I don't know why, I, I just like it. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, I stick it on. I like to leave a bit of um, ooze at the bottom where it joins the throwing, a little bit of sort of slurry squishing out like cream from a bun. And, um, and I, I tend to tidy the top up a little bit more because it seems more appropriate against the slightly tighter extrusion. And then finally I put my sprig on it. Make sure that the water is coming out all around the edge for a reaction, give it a bit of a push on and, and run a brush around just to ensure that the edge is sealed. And um, that's about all there is to it. Life is very full, very diverse, but the main focus of my life still and always has been making pottery. I'm just unable to stop. It's just not doable. <laughs>